Now, finally, color choosing. Um, I need a, quite a couple of browns, skin tones, grays and blacks. So I'm, I don't need all of my trays. Um, uh, I actually do, because <laughs> he has blue eyes. <coughs> so I need a little bit of a blue gray for the eyes and the red is, uh, it might be on the skin tones. Yeah, mm, no, whatever. Anyway, babbling. Um, I want to start, what do I want to start with? I want to start with the violin. Again, left, uh, right to left to not smudge too much. Smudge too much. So I'm just going to choose the pencils that I want to use for the violin. Uh, of course, I'm gonna choose the black. Of course, I'm gonna choose Payne's Gray. These are two perfect um, uh, shading colors for me. Uh, I also want the sepia dark brown. Um, and I want a somewhat of a lighter cool brown, which is nougat. That's what it's called. And then going back to the sepia brown. Now I'm just going to extend my shadow section here with just the lightest touch. First with the sepia and then with the black. Just to have it look rich and dimensional. <coughs> like so. First part. Uh, next part, I do have the highlight here and the dark here. I did indicate that already while I was um, uh, while I was uh, coloring with the ink tents and the neo colors. So now I can go in with the sepia. This is something I always find irritating when I use a lot of light pencils on top of black outlines. They look kind of different then. Kind of almost milky. So I'm um, usually going over the lines once more with a black pencil or a dark pencil at least. There we are. So uh, this is Sherlock for now. There we go. This is how the violin looks. You can see uh, that it really is way more richer and more in the foreground than, say, his hands and his face. And uh, now you can imagine how he will pretty much jump out of the page or pop pretty much against the background, though the background being quite colorful once I do have the colored pencils down for him. <laughs>